Where's my PA? Uh, I went to Bayern Munich, flew out from uh, Leeds Airport on Tuesday night. Uh, now I watched it in my lounge. Um, <laughs> my wife was trying to get me to stick it over to EastEnders, but I won the day. Uh, yeah, so I watched it. I watched it in the lounge with my, with my son and my wife. Yeah. What did you think of that performance? Uh, I thought for the first 47 minutes, I thought they looked as though they could get even two one in front at one point. So for 47 minutes, they looked if not the better team, certainly on a par. And then Bayern Munich went into Bayern Munich mode and in fairness, I think they'd have beaten anybody, any English Premiership team in that 45 minutes. So it's no disgrace. I know the result's going to sound uh, poor and I know there's going to be an overreaction to the result. But when Bayern Munich and Barcelona and Real Madrid fancy it, you're in real trouble. And it's one of the things I was going to talk about today. I think in sport, it's about levels. And at the moment, none of the English top six clubs can get near Bayern Munich or Barcelona or Real Madrid. That's a fact. And I don't care. I think any English club playing against Bayern Munich in that second half would have struggled. What kind of Arsenal team would you like to face? Because obviously you stand a much better chance against the mm. second string. But it must be an exciting moment for the club to face you know, the big players. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's two, two ways of looking at it. You either um, get the likes of Ozil and Sanchez and, and Giroud and I just keep naming them. Uh, in which case we would lose the game uh, comfortably, but the lads would get the experience of having played a Premier, you know, Premier League giant. Or you go the other way and you, you play a team of 23s that are still internationals, by the way, um, mixed in with one or two of their squad players, and that gives us that 1% chance that we'd be after. I think if, if you see Ozil and uh, Sanchez on the team sheet, our chance doesn't come beyond naught. But if they put another team out, then it does get up to the 1s and 2%. This is a what do you think a good result is then? The best result for the players would be a nil-nil. Well, no, for you, for you lot, probably a 3-3, three, 2-2. Three, two, two. But any, if, if we were to get a draw uh, and we could get back to the Emirates, it would be one of the biggest results in, in the Cup history. Um, and for the players, I think half of the team support Arsenal. Uh, and for the chance for them to go to the Emirates and just have a, a great day out would be probably what would be their preferred result. Did the players watch it together last night, do you know? Well, our, we, we travelled on Tuesday morning to Leeds because we, we played up at Guiseley and we, we didn't get back till yesterday afternoon. Uh, we're now back here again this morning for us. You know, we're a traditional non-league club that does Tuesdays, Thursdays. And this week, you know, just because of the game and what's happening today has meant you know, they've not been able to work either. So um, they wouldn't have spent last night together. Uh, they spent Tuesday night together. Um, uh, that was the... I know what you're saying about levels, Paul, but after what happened last night, Arsenal are under, are under more pressure, aren't they? Game. It depends what Arsenal team you're talking about because mm. I think the Arsenal 11 or 13 um, that played last night are perceived to be under pressure but if he puts a younger team out then they can't be you know, put in the same bracket so there's two ways of looking at how they, how they cope with this or deal with it and if they put the best side out and it's, you know, and it's not the best game for them they might, they're going to win but if it's not the best performance um, but it's, it's an open forum to criticise Arsenal Football Club and Arsene Wenger and um, you know from our perspective we're, you know, we're just over the moon that they're coming here and um, my brother who's a, who's a little bit uh, richer than me he's uh, got a nice bottle of red wine he's going to give me to give him so uh, you know we, we're going to treat them with a lot of respect and give them a nice Sutton welcome because that's what this club's about. Do you think you can afford not to play his best team? I mean this is a, a crucial game for Arsenal's season. Um, can you afford not to play his best team? If he played the team that beat Southampton, which I think everyone in this room knows that I'm a massive Southampton fan, and by the way, we'd have got him if Saints had bothered to beat Arsenal. Um, <laughs> if uh, he puts out the team that beat Southampton, 5-0, then that would hammer us, obviously. Um, our only chance is if he puts out an under-23 Premier Reserve side, because uh, National League sides can compete against academy players and and would have a, a real chance. Could you just reflect on 
what you've had to do to dedicate yourself to the club and mm. what it means to reach this point? Um, probably 17 years in management, eight years at Eastleigh, nine years at Sutton now. Um, obsessed with football uh, from the age of probably one, two, whatever it is. Uh, probably need football as much as it needs me in the context of what I do for the club. Um, been disappointed the last few days as well um, with some of the comments made about certain bits and pieces. Uh, the only people I care about is probably the thousand or so hardcore fans that we've got, which is a lot for a non-league club. Um, but you get caught up in a circus in the main uh, and what's happening here. And you just... Um, you just crave a bit of normality as well because we're not used to it um, and what the players have done is 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 quite remarkable because no one expected us to beat Forest Green who you know were the best team in our league by a country mile I think they won nine games on the trot before we played them uh, I think the Dartford 6-3 games one of the best, best games that I've ever watched um, I mean that it was an unbelievable game 1-0 1-0 2-1 2-2 uh, we then get Cheltenham and, and me and Bairdy and Mickey Stevens went up to watch crew Cheltenham. Uh, the chairman let us stay at the Ibis, which I believe is a three star. Um, and I think Cheltenham smashed crew on a night four or five nil. I remember walking out that stadium thinking we haven't got, you know, seriously, it was that, that was a good performance from Cheltenham. We got another last minute winner that day. Um, you then get drawn against Wimbledon, your local derby. And... You know, they've had an amazing rise the last 15 years, but we've been in their shadow, no, no doubt about that. Uh, we have another sellout crowd here. We draw nil nil. We had a better chances. Everyone assumes, and me as well, that we get beat at Wimbledon on the Tuesday night, and we went and beat them. And then you get Leeds United, and um, it can't get much bigger than that for someone like us. And then you go and win that game, and suddenly you get drawn against Arsenal. And I'm trying to just take you through the path of you asked the, the question. It's, it's. I don't know, it's, it's, it's something strange going on. Um, and certainly all these last minute winners that we keep getting, it's, it's, just an, it's just an unbelievable situation that's occurring to this football club this year. And how much financially have you committed over the years? Um, seven figures, it's, 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 over, it's, it's over a million. It's been well reported, but you know, the, the, it was an interest free loan over 10 years. Um, the biggest thing for me was getting the 3G pitch in so we could bring all the children back here, the junior teams back here. You saw today, what, over 100 children for half term, all our junior sides back here. Uh, and I did the same at Eastleigh. Um, it's, not, it's not well written about, but Eastleigh ended up with a 3G pitch. And all the stuff that I did at Eastleigh, I brought to here. Um, and the support base has grown and grown on the back of it. You know, we the best decision we ever made was to make season tickets, you know, £5 to get in, free for children. So, you, you know, as a... As a father now, you can bring your two kids down here for five quid. And it's the best thing that we've ever done. We've, our crowds have gone from 700 to nearly 2,000. Um, and we are definitely picking up people that are disenfranchised, paying £100 for a Premier League ticket. Has the chairman promised you anything if you get a result? He's promised me my loan back. Hmm. Anything beyond that? What, what, what would I want from the chairman? He's, he's an unbelievable guy. And everyone... You know, who gave up their Sunday? We had 30 volunteers here. Um, sell far, was it 4,000 tickets in four hours? Um, we all do it for for nothing here. Um, we're not an ex-league two club that's in the national league. You know, Tranmere Rovers. There's some great clubs in the national league now, and we're not that either. You know, we are still a traditional two-day-a-week non-league club. Um, you know, what the chairman has done is is backed into the vision, and he, you know, he said to me years ago, "Let's go on a roller coaster ride." Then. And, you know, as he said to me the other day, the train's still going and the comment we've used to each other, I think after the Wimbledon game, he said, what have you gone and done? Uh, and that's, we've used that thing, you know, what have you done? And um, I have ended up not realising it, but putting the club under enormous pressure the last month because the media attention, uh, people giving up their, their you know, we, we've had people like Tony Dolbear, our press officer, who's had to actually take days off of work just to become a press officer. And... Uh, that's what you need to write about. It's the volunteers here that, you know, have genuinely taken holiday days just to carry on, you know, just doing what's a normal situation for everybody else. So I take my hat off to them, really. And I don't know if you've seen it, but there, there's a, a YouTube video of our under-10s team when Jamie Collins scored the penalty against Leeds. 
and amongst all the madness that that yesterday sort of almost that took a shiver up my spine because to see the ten year olds you know and it was a good one minute video of it and it was just that sums what everything I've tried to get and achieve at the club. Do you feel certainly you seem to be a, a bit of a for Arsene Wenger as a fellow manager? Sympathy, no. no. I think he's um, he's well schooled. He's twenty years in the job. Uh, Ferguson, Mourinho, Guardiola, Wenger. Um, don't feel sorry for them at all uh, because they're in that mad world that's football. What's changed is that when we beat Coventry in nineteen eighty nine, and you had the likes of you know Brian Kilcline at centre half, um, proper proper players, what I would call proper players. The, 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 it's, they're now movie stars, the players who refuse to play in certain games if they don't like the changing rooms and don't like the toilets and you know they don't like the League Cup apparently anymore. So it's changed in that regard. I think that managers now um, have to treat players differently. Um, Wenger's getting criticised, I think wrongly as well, uh, that he doesn't have enough leaders and enough this and that in the dressing room, but he's still managed to qualify for the Champions League for the last 15 years. Um, I'd rather be in Arsenal's position than Manchester United's playing in Europa League. Speaking about the change rooms, what do you reckon the likes of Ozil and Sanchez are going to make of your changing rooms when they rock up, when they rock up for, the, for the game? Quite a, quite a well, we thought about putting new shower heads in for about two seconds and then, thought, <laughs> and then thought, no, you know, at the end of the day, we haven't done it for uh, any of the other teams that are coming down. Listen, it's only because we haven't been able to afford it, it's, it's, it's not us trying to be big and clever. Um, one of the uh, players said to me the other day, you know, when I played against you, it was always hot in the dressing room. I said, well, it's because we can't turn the rad off, the valve's gone. Um, it's, not, it's nothing clever. John Beck in the old days at Cambridge used to water and hose down the dressing rooms. And, you know, it's some great stories with John Beck. Ours is just lack of money. Um, and the one thing that the cup run's going to do is it won't go into buying players. It won't go into, you know, our wage budget's very, very strict. But what it will do is uh, we need four new dressing rooms for the younger for the younger ones. We're about to announce, or we're going to announce to you now that we've signed and the first time in the club's history. Uh, it's been in the, the making for six months, but the, the ground's going to be renamed the Knights Community Stadium. Uh, the Knights Community Stadium uh, is basically runs academies, and we've got 116 year olds starting here in September in the new school term. Uh, so we're looking hopefully to buy four dressing rooms, four shower rooms, um, and place them around the ground. Um, and we've got a roof, I think everyone knows the roof, it's probably just about to leak on you there. Yeah, yeah, if you look up. Um, no, we're doing the interview for the Leeds game and it, it seriously did splash me on the nose and someone laughed and uh, I laughed because then they went in the bar and slipped up because um, there was a leak by the bar as well. So we get the roof completely uh, redone. Uh, the boiler's absolutely shot to pieces, which is why at best they'll get lukewarm showers. If you ask about the showers, um, I don't think we've got a water softener either, so I think the water's struggling to get through those three little pins in the shower head. Uh, so the reality is um, we will be able to, and I do mean this, be able to refurbish the whole club. Uh, we'll get all the academy sorted out, the juniors sorted out. Um, I don't know if you'll ever see Monday night because the floodlights are shocking. Um, chairman said we can add two more bulbs to each, uh, each, each lamp, um, which is a big thing for us to get the extra two in. Uh, I think there's six, how many, is it six pylons? That's 12 extra bulbs. Um, and if Arsenal can find a way, and there is a way, by the way, and this is a loaded question for my mate over there in a minute, but you know, there was talk of them giving us the TV money and there was talk of us donating the gate receipts back. And um, you know, there, is, there is a way, because Arsenal can just go and buy those classrooms for us and they can go and do all the things that we've said. And it would change every, every aspect of this football club, but for years to come. And... Um, you know, it's 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 life changing for the club, and it will it will it will stay within the club for for a few years to come as well. This isn't going to be blown overnight, but I promise you, I will put new shower heads in the away dressing room. A lot of managers might look at a cup run as a chance to get themselves in the the shop window for a, a league job. Mm. I mean, it sounds like your your only interest is is turning this club, uh, you know, improving this club, and you're not interested. If anyone really knows me and you sort of go back, I did the same at Eastleigh. We were in the Wessex League and I got them to the, to the National South. And one of my, my sort of ambitions um, was always to try and manage in the National League. My job and my family um, and football are the three things that keep me going. Um, 
with all of us, we get it in the wrong order at times. It's normally football, family, and work. Um, and that's you know, and, and my wife and the children have, have have probably suffered at times because of my obsession with the game. Um, but then you watch their, watch my kids run on the pitch after Leeds game, and that was for me that's priceless to have that one minute with them after beating Leeds. Um, and my wife was in the stand, and you know you. So family's clearly the most important thing to me, and I'm not being disrespectful. Um, I've got no going into League Two or League One. It holds no enthusiasm for me at all. I've got a very very good company that I need to run. Um, it's 30 years old, and it's it's. Um, it's very important, you know. We, we, we employ over a hundred people, uh, and I'm not a CV manager. You know, I've got no interest in going to any league club. But I am enjoying going to Tranmere Rovers and Lincolns, and the National League for us is is the holy grail for us. Um, at the moment, and it's another point I'd like to pick pick up if you don't mind. Is is that there's a split vote on the pitch going into League One and League Two, and most League Two clubs are skint, and I mean skint. And if people can take anything from this cup run and, and you guys being here, it's the fact that we've gone, as I said, from having zero children here, because they couldn't play on it because the pitch was so bad, to having hundreds, and I mean hundreds. That means the mums and dads come down, they're engaged in the club. And if League One and League Two would actually, one club would vote to allow this unbelievable, and it's a brilliant pitch, by the way. Uh, it's been played in the SPL, it's been played in the World Cup for the women in Canada, and there's nothing wrong with it. Now, if they vote this pitch through and we get in the playoffs one year, then I'll become a league manager because I would do it if I was here. But we'd still be Tuesdays, Thursdays. You know, We might go to a Monday, but I wouldn't be here because I can't. But the reality is that we are the best non-league club. We want to be the best non-league club we can be, which is, has also meant trying to be approachable to everybody. Sorry. Does, how many good players are full-time dedicated to football and how many... I think, again, if you look at our record, what, what, what we've tried to get out there to everybody, to the younger players, is when you're released by Arsenal and you're released by Palaces and all the rest of it, that their lives go from like there and they go to there very quickly. And what we try to do is get hold of the ones that, that, that are there and have got that chance. But it's such, for them, it's a mental thing as well. It takes us months to get them back to even enjoying football again. So the reality for us is we like to be a club that, you know, like Jeffrey Monacan is a prime yeah. example of someone who was going to be the and Jack Jeb actually, both at Arsenal. Beth, Beth, both were going to be, one was going to be the new Jack Wiltshire, one was going to be the new you know the new winger through the block, and they both ended up here. And what we try and do is rehabilitate those players in a positive way. And then if if another club in the football chain comes and wants to take them, then we we welcome that. It's an unusual thing that a manager is wanting in the players to progress, um, but that is that is the situation here. What's the maximum wage, if you can say that? You yeah, I don't mind. Listen, our, again, we're very open. Our best players here earn six hundred pound a week net, uh, and most of the lads earn between four fifty and five hundred. But you know, when we started here, it was one hundred and fifty, and it's gone to two fifty. And you know, the wage bill here is ten grand a week. Um, obviously, I don't take a wage. My, Ian Baird doesn't take a wage. But nor does Mickey Stevens. So we're able to put all of our budget into our players. And you know, if you've got twenty players in the squad, which we have, it averages out at five hundred pound a week. And for those at 600, this is their own job, they've not got other jobs on the side. So no, they, this, the, the, they can work the other three days, um, but also um, there are their wives and, and girlfriends, actually, some of them are a lot, lot brighter, and it's not a shot than some of my players. Um, so Craig Eastman's wife is at university doing a, you know, doing a degree, so he's, he looks after the children for the other three days. And you know, Craig Dundas is a personal, assist, a personal trainer, also cares for his mum. I know Roy Deacon's a carer for his mum. So everyone's got their own personal circumstance. Simon Downer's wife is a very clever girl. She's, uh, you know, in charge of uh, a big department. So again, he's he's a house husband, um, and you know, I think that's a that, that's a real benefit. I think that I like our players to work. Um, the young ones don't because they're looked after by their mums um, and dads, and maybe the mums, and they still do their washing and their ironing. But I don't. I, I like the ones that get out and do some work as well because. That's what we. You know, that's what I've got to do. Paul, have you got a couple of players <coughs> struggling for fitness? You had picked up yeah. a couple of injuries of guys, and who's, who's struggling? Well, we had nine out for Guysley. Yeah. Um, two of those, primarily because they were on nine bookings, and I just couldn't. You know, we even had to play Simon Downer in the end on on Tuesday. With that short, that we we risked Simon. Um, Dean Beckwith, who would have played against Leeds, had a, uh, 
had his hamstring against Worthing on the Tuesday. Dean's Dean's close to being fit, and I thought he he worked quite well from what I saw of it today. He worked well. Max Biarmu is probably our best uh, striker who we'd like to be available, and he's having an injection in his ball of his foot um, today. So Dean's a Dean's a, a doubt. Max is a bigger doubt. Uh, Jeffrey Monacana's out for definite with a hamstring. Bradley Hudson Adore is almost certainly out with a calf, although he's trying to. Did you see him run with a limp? He's trying to tell me he's fit. You know, that's it's. I, I don't blame him because it's the biggest game he'll ever want to be involved in. But so I didn't. I didn't see much of it today. But Bradley says he feels sharp. How much of a headache is that team selection for you? It's been a real headache in the last month because since the cup run started, I couldn't. You know, we thought the Leeds game would be the biggest game in a player's career. Uh, so we had players there on nine bookings and four bookings, and again, it's a it's a major issue of mine that you know the Premiership will play 36 games, and we got to play 46 plus all these cup rounds to get to it. So we're playing nearly 60 games, but we're on the same we get the same booking uh, situation as anybody else. So our five bookings, which or ten bookings, are spread over 60 games, and other people are 36 games. It doesn't seem quite right to me. So we totally had to look at all the players and it's been to the detriment of our league for me. I think we were ninth when we started the run. I think we're 17th now. And uh, at some point, you know, if the run does end on Tuesday, the one positive of that for us is that we will look at very quickly how we get back to where we want to be in the league. Because we can't go down, that would be a disaster. With, with regards to the gate receipts, you mentioned that there's been talk about Arsenal mm. possibly giving that to you. Mm. Is that something which you or the chairman would, would try and have that conversation and ask Arsenal? Well, why do you think I'm getting Arsene Wenger a 300 pot of pound of red wine? <laughs> um, there's a method. There's a method to my madness. Yeah. Listen. Th- 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 again, already they've been, you know, they've been approached by other uh, people and asked the question. Um, Arsenal's turnover is 330 million pounds a year. Okay, and ours is, I think, 800 thousand. And they were superb. Their first reaction was yes. You know, we'd love to do it. We'd love to do it. And it's a great PR story for them as well because. Every penny they give us will go into the academy and you know supporting these kids actually that have been released from Premier League clubs and and if we, we're going to give them that chance and it's as I said the sponsorship from Knights community and going into Knights Academy means that again all the money that they're giving us is going to go into the academy and there is I think you have got a responsibility you know there is a responsibility on on clubs like us in this community to get lads that are 16 17 18 19 not feeling that they're worthless and without over dramatising it, you know, a lot of the kids that are coming out of these academies from the professionals, it's it's a it's, it's a very difficult path for them to mentally get their heads around it, and it does lead to some bad situations. Um, and we are, you know, we're a little beacon at the moment, um, and we will, you know, we will make it happen. But unfortunately, in life, it's all about the money, and whether we can make the only way we can make all this happen is if we get as much out of the cup run as we can. And all I can promise everyone is we won't we won't waste a penny of it. It's, it's everything we've got is geared up to going back into the infrastructure and making this club yep better in ten years, twenty years time. So that, that that's the, that's the principle. Do the players released by Arsenal playing for you now feel they have a point to prove, or do they just try and think of it as playing as well for Sutton as they can? No, I think the lads got released because they weren't good enough. That they know that. I mean, it's a fact that you know that a very very small percentage can ever make it in the Premiership. Um, I think that they're looking forward to it more. I've got to say that. I don't necessarily have a point to prove, but I think what you'll find is the likes of Eastman and Deacon on the night. You know, When you talk about how do people raise their game at any sport, you'll see, you know, you'll see a Sutton United team that, regardless of the result and the score, will, have, will probably raise, raise its game to its highest ever level because they'll run through brick walls to, you know, to, to, to give it their best shot. You've mentioned... Jeffrey Monacana there, has he, has he taken missing out because this is a, probably a one, one-time chance? It's a bit different for Jeff because he's only come to me about four or five weeks ago, um, so he's not really been a massive part of the cup run, If I'm being, you know, to be honest. If Rory Deacon had missed it, I'd have felt devastated, or Eastman had missed it, because they've been massive parts of you know what we've been doing. If, if my skipper had missed it, Jamie Collins. Um, but the difference with Jamie Collins is he's old school. You know, he, he, is a, he is the builder that you're all looking for. If you want a story, Jamie is... The brick layer, the, the plasterer, um, massive West Ham fan. Uh, what you know, does his two days football, works three days, gets up at five in the morning to go to work. Um, has a Sunday off probably, and that's his day. And, take, and that day's football, because he takes all of his boys to to their football. So he's the classic non-league 
uh, person that we all used to think about 20 years ago, you know, the postie that was delivered on the day of the game. Um, we've moved on a bit since then, but there's one or two that actually do do proper work, what I'd call proper work anyway. Next weekend's, of course, with Wembley, presumably, for yeah, yeah, we're lucky enough to um, to get the four tickets that we needed. Um, I had a lovely text from Les Reed as well after we uh, after we got the draw, just saying I'm sorry we couldn't have done better against Arsenal. Um, I sort of model myself a little bit on on what Southampton have done because I think the model the, the model here, which is to bring young players in, improve them, and then let them move on, uh, is not a lot different to what Southampton have done. Our budget at this within the National League sits within lot Southampton have probably got within the Premier League. So. You know, naturally, I take a lot of um, references from the club. I was very fortunate when Alan Pardew was manager that uh, the club asked me to help find him a house because of my job, and I got to know uh, Alan from there. And he, he invited me, and I was able to go into virtually every training session for you know as long as I wanted, and uh, picked up loads and loads from a, a, a superb coach, by the way, and watched the sessions. So, with all these sort of connections with Southampton, um, you know, as I said, apart from the fact we were one well, we were one game away from drawing them. The whole family, you know, there's about 30 of us season ticket holders are all going up, I think 9.20 train from Winchester uh, and praying that we can do a Bobby Stokes in the 1976 against them. Doubtful. Have you, Al was in the stands for the last game. Will he be back for this one and have you picked his brains? He's had a few wins against Arsenal before. No, it's um, Alan's here. Um, he supported the club, you know, even at the start of the, the cup run. And he's been a great friend to the club. He's actually a, a friend of the, one of the directors, and it's through his wife and I think the horse in fraternity. Um, Matt Letizia is a good friend of mine from the Southampton days, and Matt's coming up as my guest, and so is Laurie McMenemy, who, you know, as a Southampton fan, he is the, the one. So Laurie's coming up, and Matt's coming up, uh, and Adam Pardew's coming up. Um, you know, we had David Weir here in the last round. You know, Ricky Boylan, a, a boxer uh, from this area, has been brilliant. And um, you know, it's it's that little, just that little bit of nice bit of sugar on top to get those types of people that want to come and support us on the day. Okay. Um, so what's going to happen now is uh, there are some players who are going to come out in a bit. I think the crew, the CD guys, wanted to go back 